to take the time and thank you first uh, for uh, spending the time here with us for this webinar. Uh, we wanted at HBS Shonox North America wanted to address the world of subfloors. But first, we wanted to also let you know that we've been an active platinum sponsor uh, since the beginning of HBS Shonox North America. And we certainly appreciate all the educational benefits such as the SIM, the Certified Installation Manager Program at FCICA. So with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague and introduce Doug Young, the Executive Vice President of Sales. Thank you, David. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to get on the, the call this morning. just want to tell you a little bit uh, about Chernox. Um, just You see in the picture there, that's the picture of our factory in Germany. Chernox has been around for about 125 years. Uh, we are headquartered in Germany. Uh, as I mentioned, the picture is our, our manufacturing facility in Rosendahl. Uh, we are a leading manufacturer of four leveling compounds, primers, moisture mitigation, and adhesives. And we are distributed in 20 European countries and North and South America. This picture is a picture of Thomas Trissel, who some of you may know. He is responsible for bringing Chernox to North America in 2011. Uh, Thomas is a German immigrant who founded Centiva, a leading LVT manufacturer. Yeah, he sold that company to Tarket several years ago and then brought Chernox to North America with HBS uh, North America. Uh, the, the connection to Chernox and Thomas is his father uh, runs what still runs one of the largest floor dealers in Germany. Uh, Thomas grew up on job sites as a kid, uh, so he's very familiar with the installation industry as well as the, the issues that face installers on job sites. Uh, the connection to Chernox comes in where his father has been a nearly 60 year customer of Chernox, uh, consistently using those products and is very familiar, both Thomas and his family, with the company, the people that work there, the sales force, the products more importantly, and what uh, solutions they can provide. HBS Chernox, the biggest thing that differentiates us from in the marketplace would be our people. Our people are, as it says on the slide here, well-educated, definitely customer-focused is our biggest um, attribute. We focus uh, very, very closely and very passionately on solving problems for our customers and making sure that our customers have everything they need for a successful installation. They are team-oriented, inspired, and entrepreneurial. You will see them um, out and about with our Chernox branded vehicles as well as uh, Chernox branded shirts and, and everything. So there we, we are very passionate about uh, helping our customers. Three things that our products are all designed, whether it's a floor leveling compound, moisture mitigation, whatever particular product category it falls into, these are three things that each of our products focus on doing and things that we're trying to help our customers with. We're trying to solve your problems, save time, and control costs. Those three things together will help any job go more smoothly. Um, each product category kind of has its unique way of, of solving each of those particular issues. Um, but we, the biggest thing that they all try to do is allow our customers to reclaim subfloors that might otherwise be lost, meaning uh, instead of undoing a lot of what's already there and having to go through the process of demolition, we allow you to use some solutions that can can utilize what's already there and, and make the job go better. And all of our product categories are designed to work together. When we issue a recommendation for a particular project or a solution, um, we we always put each of our product categories into a sandwich. So the system together uh, creates the sandwich and all the products are designed to work together. Now, if it seems like you've heard a lot more about Chernox as well as other subfloor companies recently in the last five to 10 years than you ever did before, you're right. And that's because there have some, been some changes in the industry and changes of, on job sites that have occurred in the last several years that kind of moved the industry a little bit towards subfloor products. Uh, a list of those are on this next slide. Okay. 
fast track projects and low bid awards, uh, the two things that those pro those uh, particular things do is, although everybody likes to move very fast and save money, obviously that does lead to the third bullet point there, which is a loss of craftsmanship. We want to go fast and we want it to be low cost, but as everybody knows, the low bid isn't always the best bid. It's not always the best solution. So those particular things have combined for an overall uh, loss of quality as far as the job site goes. Curing compounds and water-based adhesives are also a couple of, of product problems that have occurred on job sites recently and happen to be doing more in, in, in recent years. Curing compounds basically are a bond breaker. So if you, if you are going on the job site where you're going to be putting products down, whether it be a finished floor, a leveling compound, a subfloor product, either way, you need to know if there is a curing compound in, in your slab. And if so, how to get the correct information about what the specific compound is. Water-based adhesives can also be a bond breaker. The reason why is that there's a bigger problem today with moisture in slabs. And if you have water-based adhesives that are going to react poorly to, water, to moisture in the slab, then you need to know that. And it's good that there are products out there that can address those problems. The decline of soft surface materials, as well as the increase of hard surface materials, uh, move the industry towards the subfloor industry. And the reason why is if you have a bad subfloor and you're installing carpet, carpet for the most part, part can help disguise that problem. But if you're putting down hard surface and more specifically resilient products like LBT, those products telegraph every little imperfection in the subfloor. And that means that if you try to lay your, your LBT, for instance, over an imperfect subfloor, that insulation, that finished insulation is going to be imperfect as well. So it, it really drives the industry to use more products that will create a flat level subfloor to, to make their finished product look the best. Thank you, Doug. So let's take a look at some of those moisture uh, issue examples. Advancing the slide here. Area. Here you see four pictures, and what what we're showing you here is is simply moisture affecting the finished floor covering, whether it be uh, a coating or a linoleum or a sheet vinyl of sorts in slide two, or VCT tile in slide three. Uh, that moisture is trapped underneath that solid surface or that hard surface flooring. Even to point out the slide four, where you have engineered hardwood or uh, nailed down hardwood, uh, either one can trap moisture underneath and that moisture has to escape and it's gonna escape through the top finished floor covering and create bubbles or cup tiles such as you see in the VCT floor on the left. Moisture uh, affects many manufacturers of finished floor covering if we don't have the right moisture barrier uh, and if it's ever compromised and the moisture uh, does have a point to intrude underneath the floor, it's going to then obviously damage uh, the finished floor covering. Here you see a finished uh, VCT floor on the left in a hallway uh, without possibly the, the correct subfloor prep or the smoothing, the patching, the leveling of that surface. You can have telegraphing through once you have a clean, shiny, waxed surface uh, that is pronounced through uh, outside light or electrical light up from above. Here you see the same similar th sort of thing as telegraphing through the sheet vinyl in the hallway with the center lights from above. That's why it's important to have the, the correct subfloor prep according to not just the manufacturer installation guidelines but the industry guidelines. And with Shonux products you can achieve that. Here you see a little bit more of a pronounced telegraphing issue where maybe there was a half wall or a, a, an entire wall where you have two by fours or something in the concrete. Obviously, you see on the, the left hand side, a trench, if you will, and those tiles were replaced over uh, that trench. If, if you don't address that trench properly, it's very likely that the moisture in the slab will push up through the VCT and create the telegraphing that you see there. And obviously, you have the, the, the difference in the color of the VCT. 
The same similar thing is happening, maybe not as pronounced, but the slightest little bubble uh, of moisture pushing up underneath that VCT can create just a more of, more of a problem uh, pushing up on that finished floor covering, if not addressed. Here you see some extreme cases. In slide one, you have moisture uh, that has affected the adhesive underneath the VCT tile, and that tile is then what we call or what the industry will refer to as the adhesives bleeding up through the seams. Slide two shows adhesive after flipping over uh, a tile, you can see the adhesive re-emulsified by the trapped moisture in between the finished surface and coming up through the slab. Other substrate issues or surface prep issues are residues. On slide three, you have an improperly prepared substrate where the, the adhesive is only sticking to the back of the floor covering. Notice the improperly prepared surface with residues, possibly black adhesive. On slide four, you see mold. A lot of times you'll see this in multifamily housing, and that's why Shonox can address these problems with you. You possibly could have mold that is trapped underneath carpet, and you're gonna transition this facility or this building or this hallway from soft surface to hard surface. Well, if you don't address the moisture issue that is present on that substrate, you will have a floor failure. And these are all examples of subfloors gone wrong. To the point of what you see on your screen now. What you see here is an indentation. So not so much a telegraphing of, of the floor covering, a pushing up, if you will, but this is a collapse of the substrate below. This is very evident that we didn't do our job as an installer to prep that surface, prepare it, so we would have a properly prepared, smooth, Shonox smooth floor. Yeah, that previous slide was uh, Bass Pro Shops in Chicago that was installed over, the building was built over basically a swamp. So um, it's very important to, to realize obviously the job site conditions when you're out making these recommendations. As far as the segments, individual segments of the pro of uh, projects that we're involved with, so uh, Shonox is involved with uh, pretty much projects that are in any, any segment of the commercial market. Uh, the first one we're gonna address is healthcare. As you can see from the slide, it's a very large segment, four billion square feet, quite a bit of growth over the past 10 years. Healthcare is made up of acute care or hospitals, uh, long-term facilities, as well as assisted living. Um, one thing that, uh, especially with, with uh, acute care, with hospitals, patient rooms and operating rooms, one thing that they share with also retail the retail segment would be, those are areas that absolutely cannot shut down for any length of time. So to do a flooring project uh, really is, a, is an inconvenience for them. So if there are products that, that can be used that speed that up in addition to providing them with a quality finished product, uh, that's gonna be something they're gonna be interested in. Uh, David has a, a couple of projects here involving a, an operating room and how we help that uh, customer as well. So here you see a hospital uh, in Norfolk, Virginia. This was a ground floor slab on grade that had moisture issues. This is the first installation of uh, luxury vinyl tile and it was installed over a uh, terrazzo. Now the terrazzo that you see on the left, uh, the terrazzo seams or joints, the metal transitions between the terrazzo um, that are specifically designed in that floor uh, were covered. Maybe they were just uh, patched over and you can see them telegraphing through the finished LVT. The same thing is happening on the right, where you have a, a, a roll, a crown, a dip uh, in that substrate, in this case, the terrazzo surface, and it will, in time, almost inevitably, quickly telegraph through the floor. So how we, did we correct this situation? Well, we walked the job with our local uh, representative, uh, our regional business manager in the area, and we worked with the contractor, got the right recommended products for the job, and created a Shonox smooth floor. Let me show you the products we used. We used Shonox SHP primer, which is our non-porous primer, and then we used two levelers that are synthetic gypsum. Our synthetic gypsum levelers 
that we used, our Shonox AP and our Shonox APF. Our APF is fiber reinforced for good deflection uh, properties and values. Shonox synthetic gypsum levelers don't have the same shrinkage that Portland-based levelers do. Therefore, they can go over many different types of surfaces as we'll continue to show you today. 48% of our products, as far as synthetic gypsum are concerned, are made from recycled content. There, there you see the finished poured floor, and here you see the finished luxury vinyl tile, beautifully crafted floor, beautifully designed, well-crafted by a flooring mechanic, where you see great curves and transitions from one color of tile to the next. That, folks, is a Shonox smooth floor. Let's take it a step further in another healthcare facility. Surgical suites, if not doing what you do in them, operating on people and getting them healthy, if they're not running and operating, they can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what we've done here is we, we walk this job, got the right product specified. So first the contractor is going to take that concrete slab and scrape down the surface and then take a grind, diamond grinder or shot blaster and create a surface profile of two or three. That's a CSP of two or three. At this point, because we wanna turn this surgical suite over quickly back to the hospital in 24 hours, how do we do that? We use Shonox EPA Rapid. Shonox EPA Rapid will dry in as little as two hours. Sometimes we can have that EPA Rapid epoxy dry as little as an hour and a half. So we apply, we squeegee apply, and then back roll that surface. And we have a moisture mitigation system that is 100% RH to correct all your moisture issues. Now, incidentally, EPA comes in two versions, EPA and EPA Rapid. The EPA Rapid that I showed you on the previous slide is just a faster result. It's 100% solid epoxy. So once the picture on the left, once that epoxy is dried in that hour and a half, then we would apply our SHP non-porous primer. That is our Shonox SHP non-porous primer. Once that primer is dry in 20 to 30 minutes, we're ready to start leveling the floor with our Shonox ZM Rapid. Now the beauty and the craftsmanship of Shonox ZM Rapid is it can dry in 90 minutes. Yes, in an hour and a half. So we would pour that floor in this operating room and there we would be able to take an hour and a half lunch as this dries. Once this surface dries, we're ready to install floor covering that same day. So by one o'clock, if we manage this project well, we can start installing the finished sheet goods that here you see flash coved up the wall. It's also a heat welded floor where by the end of the day, you can have your Shonox products installed, your finished floor covering installed, and you, the contractor, can turn this surgical suite back over to the hospital so they can start cleaning it and preparing it to do what they do the very next day. Retail, so retail and healthcare, as I mentioned, have a couple things in common in that, as David just mentioned, if the area is shut down, if a sales floor is shut down on the retail application, they're not making money. So they need that, that area to be up and running as soon as possible. Some common threads with retail retailers across the country, uh, what we hear a lot from them is, as far as a common problem is moisture. Moisture seems to be a very common issue in all of their spaces. What they're typically doing, and again, this is freestanding stores, mall stores, even restaurants, they're, t they're typically taking over a space and converting it from what it was to what they want it to be. And whether that means that it was their own store that they're converting in a new design, or that means they're taking over a new space, they're often converting their spaces. So not only is moisture an issue, but you also have uh, the issue that comes up often about what the space was used for before it's being turned into a retail store. Uh, David has an example of a project that we worked on uh, recently that shows this. Yes. Yeah, so 
a lot of these projects will go from one business to the next and the, the retail space needs to transition. So on slide one, you see a trench that was cut in. Uh, obviously, uh, this is done quite a bit. I'm sure you see this day in, day out uh, where uh, that retail space will need plumbing or electrical in the, in the floor. Uh, well, Shonox has products such as SEZ Plus, which is a deep trench filler that can address that, that trench uh, that's been cut into the surface of the slab. Uh, on slide two, you have existing flooring. A lot of times these buildings um, being in transition, being remodeled, have finished floor covering, in this case, quarry tile. As long as we address that surface with the right primer uh, or walls removed, as you see in the center of slide two, uh, exposed concrete there, uh, or even in slide three, where you have uh, maybe some trench fill product or you walked on the job and you you were awarded the job, uh, but they did the contractor had done some uh, previous work with uh, some cement and, and didn't finish it anywhere close to what you could put finished floor covering over. We have you covered. Taking it a step further, what we did in this specific application was we used two primers. We used our Shonox VD uh, primer that's dilutable one-to-one -one on the concrete surface areas. And then we used our Shonox SHP primer on the existing tile surfaces, provided they're well bonded to the slab. And, and this is our non-porous uh, primer in those areas. Here you see it near completion to completion. On the left, uh, starting on the left, we did use some Shonox RR, which is our uh, rapid repair mortar, as well as our Shonox AP to self-level the surface, creating a Shonox smooth floor to receive your VCT floor covering. Obviously, this has been transitioned into a convenience store remodel, and any of those areas can also be feather-edged for any touch-up uh, before this VCT would go down with using our Shonox AST in a 10-pound bag. Okay, hotels. So as you can see from the slide, it's a six billion square feet, so it's a gigantic segment. Uh, hotels typically are sharing some of the same subfloor issues that you would see in assisted living facilities in healthcare, uh, as well as multifamily units, uh, in, whether it be apartments or condos. And that common thread typically is a broken up uh, gypsum-based subfloor. Now, those are very common in hotels. That's how a lot of those buildings are built. Uh, the other common thread there would be uh, sound. So they, also, they always have a, uh, a concern about the sound transfer going from floor to floor. So David's got a, a project here of a hotel that was uh, turned into nonprofit housing. Yes, here you see a, a hotel that was renovated to, uh, uh, to receive a, a luxury vinyl plank. But before that, uh, you really can't put any, uh, almost anything over uh, a, a gypsum based substrate um, you could have so you would remove in this case uh, carpet in the hallways and you could have a gypsum based substrate that has a lot of deflection uh, as you know gypsum based substrates are more or less floating over a wood surface especially on this level the second third fourth floors of this particular uh, hotel renovation uh, so we did a couple of things first we used the right primer uh, we determined the porosity of the slab uh, we then would use the Shonox VD primer one-to-one. -one. But before we pour the Shonox self-leveling underlayment, we would put down Renotex either across the entire room, depending on how broken up that existing gypsum substrate is, or we might just place the Renotex as needed. This is an installer um, thing that we would do with you. We would walk the job with you and, and isolate some areas uh, that there might be more deflection. Identify areas that uh, what you want to do is, is really identify the areas that have a lot of deflection uh, or movement or cracked up gypsum sub substrates. Prime those areas with the VD primer, as I said, one-to-one. -one. Then you're ready to pour the surface, uh, the APF, the Shonox APF, reinforced fiber product. has tremendous PSI strength, up to 6,200 PSI, and it has great flexibility to uh, go over those, and it solidifies the entire surface. And now you have a, a surface that you see in the hall uh, and in the entire room that can receive a, a resilient floor. The rental text that's added acts as a fiber reinforced mat. It 
it floats on the surface of the gypsum and then pour it into creating this, the strength, the extra strength that you need. Here you see the luxury vinyl tile as a finished floor. This creates a Shonox smooth floor that the resilient LVT was received on. Education, education comprises K through 12 facilities, elementary schools, um, middle schools and high schools, as well as higher education, colleges and universities. The common thread with those education facilities tends to be moisture, uh, moisture in the slab, very similar to a couple of the other, like the retail that we talked about earlier. Uh, and one specific for education that we hear a lot of or see a lot of is old asbestos tile that is installed in, especially in older school buildings. Uh, so with asbestos tile being in a, in a, a space, they're going to either have to deal with it in terms of uh, dealing with abatement or they're looking for a solution that uh, that can give them a, another option, somehow able to avoid abatement. So we do have a couple of those options, and David's got a couple of projects uh, that in, illustrate that. Thank you. So uh, projects like this really get us excited. This is a really neat project that we were uh, able to be a part of. Here you see an elementary school. Uh, this, this particular project actually is in Chicago and you have nine by nine tile. And nine by nine tile uh, is typically referred to as VAT um, and, and most likely is asbestos. Once this school was tested uh, that they did have, in fact, they have that, they didn't have the budget for the uh, abatement costs as Doug outlined. So we have a solution and our solution is simply this. We remove any residues, waxes, uh, soils, debris on the surface of that nine by nine tile we walk the job, make sure that tile is well bonded. We would put down then our EPA rapid. Our EPA rapid uh, would be put down. Uh, you see that there through the slides to slide three, where once the rapid is dry in as little as two hours, we then started to use our SHP non-porous blue primer that you see on the slide three. This has a sand aggregate in it. And when it's dry, it has the equivalent of 80 grit sandpaper, very unique primer for this sort of application. What we were able to do here is simply this. We took our Shonox Synthetic Gypsum AP, our Shonox AP, we dyed it with an uh, a integral color at the time of mixing the AP, and then we poured it. When we allowed it to dry properly at three eighths of an inch, we then sealed the surface with our contractor and giving him the knowledge on how to do this to create a finished floor. Here you see that finished product that is a finished floor for the elementary school to use, saving the school the cost of to, to eliminate the remediation and create a beautifully Shonox smooth surface. Let's take it a step further. That same school had carpet that was put down over that same nine by nine tile. Why would they do that? Well, they did that to cover up the VAT, which really you're only covering up temporarily as glue down carpet such as this in broad loom glue down or carpet tile glue down does get quite soiled quite quickly. As long as this carpet is well bonded and a low pile, we have a system where we can go right over that, again, avoiding the tear out costs of not just the carpet, but in this case, the asbestos tile underneath that carpet. And the solution is synthetic gypsum self-leveler, our Shonox APF. Our Shonox APF can be poured directly on that low pile, well-bonded carpet, creating a Shonox smooth surface that you see on the right that is in the beginning stages of drying. Then you can put your hard surface sheet vinyl or LVT right over that surface eliminating, again, those tear out costs and creating a great solution. Public and government, uh, a lot of people think of government buildings as being uh, an example of the, the, of the picture that we have there on the left uh, as being sort of these, uh, you know, majestic courthouse buildings or, or something like that. But actually in reality, most government space is office space, just like a corporate office. Uh, as you can see, it's 7 billion square feet, so it's gigantic. Um, one thread that it does share with both healthcare and education 
is that uh, it doesn't typically go into a recession. So uh, it's typically going to be they're going to have government space regardless of what the economy is doing. Um, there's a, you know, this this project that David has next that he's going to talk about was actually a Federal Reserve Bank uh, in Cleveland that was being renovated. It's, it's into somewhat of a different space than it was before. It's still the Federal Reserve, but uh, one of the worst subfloors I've ever seen. Uh, it's it's incredible. So, David, why don't you take it? Sure. Uh, as Doug said, this is a Federal Reserve Bank in Cleveland, Ohio. And this particular floor was uh, the 10th and 11th floor. We have, um, initially this was uh, a basketball area and some other offices and it needed a major overhaul as you can see. So once the, uh, they did their initial reconstruction of the, the, the walls and such and they had these deep fill areas and um, they, they started doing the, the surface prep, you know, creating, uh, uh, using any deep fill product with our Shonox SEZ Plus, our trench filler, using our Shonox RR, uh, a rapid repair mortar uh, as needed, uh, more or less preparing that surface to receive a self-leveling underlayment that we call Shonox US. You see it there in the, in the third picture in the middle of the screen. But you also see uh, the contractor there uh, grinding the surface. Uh, so there was a lot of floor prep that was done on the front side of this to receive that Shonox US self-leveling underlayment. And that's what we have here. Here we started to prime the surface with our Shonox VD one-to-one -one dilutable primer, creating uh, the bond strength that we need to pour our Shonox US. Uh, and incidentally, we pumped this particular job. We were pumping upwards of 200 and plus bags per hour. And you see that on slide three uh, where they're pumping into uh, that machine there in the center of the screen through the hose, and you can pump you can pump this particular product from as little uh, as an eighth inch upward three inches directly out of the bag without aggregate. So it's a great solution for a surface like this that is one of the worst subfloors, as Doug said, he's seen and we've done. So here you see all the products that were used. Again, uh, it was our Shonox VD primer our, and our Shonox US self-leveler. Shonox US is a very unique product. Uh, it's, it's interior exterior rated. Uh, it can go, uh, as I said, up to three inches out of the bag on a surface such as this. Now, how do we come up with all these products? Well, we have uh, an R&D facility in Germany that works uh, very hard every single day, uh, testing strength of products, engineering the products to be better, and being innovative. These products, uh, are all of the products that we've mentioned today, all came as a result of R&D efforts that were done in Germany. Uh, our, our facility is located uh, right across the street from that building that we showed you at the beginning. Uh, there's a brand new building that they built uh, just last year, or a year and a half ago, I should say, is when it opened. It's our new customer uh, experience facility. That, that In that building, we bring customer groups in. We take several trips a year uh, over to Germany to see the facility. We do trainings for customer groups as well as installation groups uh, all over the world. Uh, they all come to this building right here. And also in that building is the R&D facility uh, that you saw some of the pictures from the previous slide. Um, this product was... A, represented a huge investment by the company that brought that building cost about six million dollars to build um, and by investing uh, a lot of money into uh, R&D where that's how we're able to come up with a lot of the products that we've shown you today by using that money we we're able to reclaim more subfloors uh, we're able to come up with products uh, that will allow our customers to have better subfloor installation methods uh, that investment offers guaranteed return to our satisfied customers. From that same R&D, uh, we're able to create safer use of subfloor products. How? Well, we have uh, more and more dust-reduced products coming out. Uh, we're responsible with en environmental choices uh, simply by uh, using uh, recycled content such as we mentioned in our synthetic gypsums. And 
Shonox smooths, we create Shonox smooth subfloors that enhance the, your building and your customers' uh, buildings' lifespans. And we also uh, want to mention that all our Shonox products contribute to lead credits. What we do a lot uh, here at Shonox HPS is simply this. We have the ability and we uh, do job specific re letters and uh, of recommendation. We do job specific specifications. We have project specs and method specific specs. We work with all manufacturers and we will walk your job site and write a job specific warranty for your customer. This gre brings great value to your end user and it helps you with your customers day in and day out. So through this whole presentation, we've been talking about building relationships and being, uh, being a partner. And what we're talking about is Shonox is on it. And we're on it because we have upwards uh, close to 30 people in the field that are on flooring projects every day making and ha helping your flooring projects happen. And like you, we believe that anything less than an imperfect floor is a failure. And therefore, if you are looking and seeking a subfloor prep partner, Shonox is it. And we believe this and we, we design this with by that R&D creating the most technically advanced subfloor systems in the in industry. So when you have questions or when you have that subfloor from hell, our team is on it. So you may be against an insane deadline from that fast track or low bid award project that, you're, uh, that you won. And that's why you need to be partnered with Shonox because Shonox will be on it with you. So whatever your project is, we want to be your partner and bring your project to a whole new level. And that's why for everything that you put into your business and your customers and your people, that's why you need Shonox on it. At this point, we want to th say thank you for participating and turn it back over to Kelly. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Doug, for all that great information. Uh, we do have a question that came in uh, during your presentation. Uh, the question is, and I'll address it to both of you and, and whoever wants to answer this, go right ahead, please. How do all of your products contribute to lead projects? Um, is it because of their chemical makeup? So uh, the, the products are, we're, we're LEED certified. And so all the products uh, carry those uh, point, that point system in the, the LEED certification process. Uh, we're, we're a member of the USGBC and um, all the products um, count towards that LEED credit. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much, we can send some information in uh, our response out to the group regarding this as well. Excellent. Excellent. And then uh, I wanted to ask you uh, both, is there any common questions that you uh, get asked about the Shornox products? Well, really, yeah, for me, I mean, I, I do take a lot of technical calls and um, it's, it's surface prep. Um, uh, typically, we'll get a call into my phone here and uh, in the technical support center here in Florence, Alabama, and we'll have... Um, uh, you know, a scenario that is, you know, there's, we have this surface and we, um, we have that type of, um, you know, maybe there's a moisture related question or there's a residue. Um, so we have designed a specific, um, how to answer a technical call, a, a sheet, if you will, to follow. Cause a lot of times we'll ask questions like, well, what, what's the square footage? Uh, what is your, what are you putting on your, on top of the surface? What type of finished floor covering? Um, big difference between obviously carpet tile versus hard surface as Doug outlined. But um, a lot of times, nine times out of 10, it's moisture related questions or surface residue questions or existing epoxy 
uh, surface on the concrete. Um, so we really have to we have to ask questions back, identifying what um, what type of surface it is. Um, sometimes there's a lot of dialogue um, via pictures. You know, we'll ask for some pictures, and then we could start to build uh, an understanding of what it is. Um, bottom line, um, one of the first things we try and do is get our Shonox representative on site, uh, depending on where they're located in the country. And I would just to add to that, I would say that's not not only what we would like to do, but I think that's a, that's also a common question that we get: is do you have somebody available to come to my job site and and sort of take a look and make an assessment? And uh, that's what our guys do every day: is go to job sites. We make we look at problem subfloors, we make suggestions, recommendations, uh, and we're also even available to help with uh, uh, training for the installation crew or even the job start. Excellent. Thank you both. Uh, we also had another question that came in. Uh, this question, um, and thank you, Amy, for your question. And this question is from this next question is from Will. Uh, he wants to know how can Shornox help us out with silica safety compliance information that's now required? Has any objective data been collected? Are new MSDS sheets available with new silica info included? So, kind of a combination question. So yes. Um, Yes and yes. Uh, first of all, uh, as far as OSHA uh, silica compliance, um, we 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 understand this, and what we do, um, we do have some um, uh, presentations that we've done. But uh, the OSHA silica compliance is a contractor rule. Um, there are many uh, great solutions. We we handle these kind of on a case by case basis, but. Um, the the OSHA silica rule is is really surrounding uh, the contractor and maybe not just the flooring contractor but the GC um, is putting in protocols to um, you know the, the proper safety equipment dust masks and gloves and, and safety glasses and so forth your PPE and and then also um, you know doing things on the job site not just with floor covering but with the other trades um, what was the second part of that question it was um, as far as training. Yeah, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the first part about was information, then about the objective data that's been collected, and the last was about new MSDS sheets. Yes, all of our S SDS, our safety data sheets, are uh, are updated on our website. There you see on the bottom left of the screen, hpssubfloors.com, um, and we can certainly, uh, you know, if you contact me uh, via email, we can send those things to you, but uh, the SDSs are all updated with uh, current uh, information regarding, um, you know, the silica content and so forth. Incidentally, um, let me one more thing about silica there, Kelly. Uh, just just uh -huh. so you, yeah, so you're aware. I mean, uh, all of the Shonox products are below the uh, the the you know the global standard as far as uh, what what that is uh, regarding uh, the silica that is published on the SDS. Thank you for that information, Dave. Um, a, a quick question also, um, you spoke about the warranties and how you will, oh, you're welcome. Will says thank you. That answered his question. Um, the warranties you mentioned, how you'll walk a job and write a job-specific warranty. Um, that's a little different than some other um, companies that uh, we have heard of um, where they warranty each product. Can you talk a little more about that? So a job-specific warranty, um, we, we put in a, a simple process uh, and we, we do this really well. Uh, the, the Shonox representative will be on site. He'll, uh, the Shonox representative will fill out a, uh, a pre-installation checklist. Uh, he'll submit that in. Uh, he'll work with you, the contractor, and even, you know, and many times the GC or, or partner with the building owner. Uh, we create this uh, pre-installation checklist. We, we, we know what the, uh, the objective is uh, and what the previous floors were or the existing concrete is. Um, maybe it's a new concrete, maybe it's a spec. And what we're, we do then, we take that information, that data, we collect that and then build a, a recommended system uh, that uh, we would then give back to the owner, the building owner gets the, the warranty uh, typically where it's written to him as a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a 10 year job specific warranty. It's a simple process. We can turn these things, these job specific warranties around in, in uh, you know, as little as 24 hours many times. So uh, it just, it just means one thing that the Shonox representative gets to your job site and we'll do that every day. 
Excellent. Thank you, Dave. Um, and, and while you were speaking, we had another question come in. I just want to remind um, everyone uh, listening that we do have some time for an additional question. Um, so if you're thinking about a question, go ahead and start typing it in and submit it. Um, this next question is from Pedro. He wants to know, um, he has a specific question about APF. And uh, his question is, with APF at a quarter inch thick in a flexing subfloor, do you warranty not to crack? And, and that was APF, correct? So that's correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it, it 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 all depends on how the surface is is prepared. It all goes back to surface profile. Um, you know, we we would it certainly you, you know warrant a properly prepared surface. Uh, the APF may need the Reynoltex in that area. Um, it, and it depends on what the substrate's doing. But a properly prepared surface, a properly prepared uh, prime surface, you know, in that in that scenario, um, yeah, I mean, it, it should not uh, have any, um, you know, deflection. Uh, it all depends on, on on what that specific job is. I don't know if this is an existing job or a job that was completed, uh, but uh, because of the the synthetic gypsum, the way it's constructed, uh, the way we put the raw materials into the bags uh, on these jobs you'll have a product that has little to no shrinkage and extreme uh, uh, dense PSI upwards of 6,200 PSI. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for your question, Pedro. Uh, let us know if you need more information. Uh, that's all the questions that we have in right at this moment. Um, Doug, David, is there anything else you'd like to add before we start to close the session? No, I was yep. just going to say thank you again to uh, to the, everybody that, that listened and participated. And uh, we're always available, as we've mentioned several times. We have people all across the country that are available to help you with any project you have at any time, uh, whether it be on-site or just simply uh, uh, information over the phone. Great. Thank you. David, anything additional to add? No, ma'am. Thanks, everyone, for your time. We really appreciate it. Great, thank you both. And again, if you have additional questions, um, David's um, contact information there, his email is um, on your slides, which you can download from the handouts tab and will be sent out to you. Um, we would like to thank Shore Knox for sponsoring today's webinar and especially thank Doug Young and David Stoll for presenting it. Thank you both gentlemen for taking the time out of your day to be with us today. Uh, again, if you'd like more thank information you. about Shore Knox products, you can visit their website, HP. Uh, hpsubfloors.com um, and the information is also on the slides. Uh, we'll send you a copy of this presentation along with a link to the recording once it's available. And just a reminder, the recording of this webinar will be housed on the FCICA website and our YouTube channel and you can access it there at any time. Um, and again, a reminder there for our certified installation managers, this and all FCICA uh, webinars uh, may be credited toward your continuing education credits. Um, for your SIM renewal um, and consult your SIM handbook or the SIM page on the FCICA website for renewal de details or contact me at kelly at fcica.com. And if you're interested in sponsoring an FCICA pro product promotional webinar or providing an educational webinar, you can contact me again at the same email. Again, we thank you for joining us today and uh, have a great day. <laughs>